Now, what did we say is the relationship between us and the master? Oh, I already gave it away. Master and what? What are we? Slaves. And in that relationship, who's got the authority? The master does. Now, I think many of you have employers, you have bosses, many of you have teachers that have authority over you, you have the teachers that have authority over you, your parents have authority over you in some respect, but none of them are masters. But if you talk about a parent having control over a child, or a boss having control over a child, or, or over an employee, or, a, you know, or a, a teacher over a student, you can't compare that much co that control to the control of a master over a slave. A master has absolute control over the slave. Does that also include all of my decisions cho and choices? Because if so, then he can't really hold me accountable for sinning or not believing in him. I mean, why did he create a hell that he sends people to forever for certain things when it is him who is controlling everything that slave does? So, obviously you will have to say that he does not tell the slave what to do, but in that case, what kind of master-slave relationship is that when the slave can easily choose to disobey his master? I mean, yeah, there are consequences, but not immediate ones. You can go by your entire life disobeying your master, basically. A master can say anything he wants and the slave has to do it. Like a boss can, doesn't, can't tell you anything he wants. He can't. You could sue him. You know, you, he, doesn't, he can't tell you. And if your job is at 5 o'clock, it ends. Your boss can't tell you, no, you have to stay till midnight. You say, no, no, I don't. I'm from the union. You know, talk to the local chapter. <laughs> you know, you, they don't have, you don't have to listen to them at, at, after a certain point. But a master, when do you have to listen to them? All the time. Now, the, we understand that we have a master from the very beginning and we've been disobeying that master from the very beginning. Can't you at least be a little bit consistent? You just said about 15 seconds ago that the, the difference between a boss and a master is that you can disobey your boss whenever you want, but you have to listen to your master always. But now apparently you can also disobey your master whenever you want, so what the hell is the point in that analogy? He has absolute authority over us, and we've spent the bulk of our life disregarding his authority. Disregarding completely his authority. And then at the end of all that disregard, he says, listen, all you need to do is be grateful to me. Be grateful to me, and ask me to forgive you for all this disregard. I'll let it all go. So let me see if I got this straight. There's this entity who created me, because he needed slaves. He wanted me to serve him and kiss his ass my entire life. And not only is he a master, but he's a brutal master and a dictator. He set up this extremely difficult set of rules that go against my nature as a human being, which he decided what that nature would be. Anyway, he set up this extremely difficult set of rules to follow. And if I violate any of them, or enough of them, he's going to torture the hell out of me. No pun intended. And not only that, but it's going to be forever. And forever is a pretty long time. But I'm supposed to be grateful to him. If you were born as a child whose destiny is to work in a sweatshop, 18 hours a day for bread. Are you supposed to be grateful for the life that you've been granted? I mean, I can understand that there's a, a, a will to survive and to go through life even in spite the hardships, but should I really be grateful to him? And, okay, if I disobey any of these strict rules, all I have to do is kiss his ass and say how awesome he is because he needs to hear this. He has a low self-esteem or something. And he'll forgive me. No harm done. I I'm sorry. I, I just can't be grateful to such an illogical being. The Quran begins, Fatiha begins with what phrase? After Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What does it begin with? Alhamdulillah. 
Now you tell me, when we think of Alhamdulillah, we think of the things Allah has given us, right? Allah has given us many things and we thank Him for it. But from the point of view of our, our, our ruh, the first and foremost things we're thanking Allah for is that Allah is our master, which He tells us in Fatiha, He reminds us again, Alhamdulillah, He what? Rabb, master, again. He's our master, we're the slave, we've been disobeying Him, but He didn't annihilate us. Again, this is extremely reminding me of BDSM. Like, it sounds like the type of mistress that would beat the shit out of her slave, force him to eat her feces, make love to his butthole with a strap on, and he will have to thank her for it, and kiss her ass, and say that she's the greatest mistress in the entire fucking world. A farmer owns a cow, and he milks the cow, and it stops milking, he says, this cow is no good for me. I'm gonna slaughter it, get rid of it. You do worse with your phone, when it stops working. You do things to your laptop out of anger, when it crashes or gives you the blue, sc blue screen of Malakul Maut. I don't know about you, but when my computer starts giving me problems, I try to fix it first. Um, throwing it around the room and breaking it would be probably my last choice of action. And besides, I should be thankful that God doesn't slaughter me for, for being imperfect the way He created me. Right, so you have a, the things you own, don't do what you want them to do. You have, you have your way with them. But Allah has not done His way with you. He lets you eat. He lets you sleep. I buy my food at the grocery store and I don't need his help to sleep. So where exactly does he come into the picture here? He gives you more. He keeps letting you go. And so for that reason we say Alhamdulillah. And so Allah asks the question, you're going to thank someone else? After everything I've given you and I keep giving you, you're going to thank someone else? Should it even be a question whether I exist or not? That's not even a question in the Quran. You understand why? Because that part of us inside that, that part of us exists inside of ourselves. So the reason why you don't have to deal with the question whether God exists or not is because you have a soul which He provided you with, which is just an assertion on your part. Because you eat and sleep, which has nothing directly to do with God, at least you can't really show how it has anything to do with God because he made you his slave yet didn't slaughter you as soon as he felt like it and if you do slip up and you fail to kiss his ass and apologize for it he's going to torture you forever and all these are just assertions without any, not only without evidence, but without even logical arguments to base them. You're basing this completely on the Quran, which by itself has no evidence to support it, which was written by a man alone in a cave over a period of many years with no witnesses. You have to take his word for it. And all this still doesn't raise your suspicion enough to need to ask if he really exists or not. Now the philosophical argument comes from the atheist or the agnostic. The argument comes, well how do you prove a soul exists? We tried to do radioactive scanners on the sci-fi channel when a person's about to die to see if there would be any seismic activity. You seen those sci-fi shows? They try to see if the, the soul is leaving the body and then the, the thing goes and they say, ah, oh, his ghost is leaving or it's back again, or whatever, right? It's just the microwaves on, but that's, that's the soul to them, right? That's a nice straw man you got there. I don't think atheists are trying to prove scientifically that there is no soul, because you're supposed to prove to us scientifically that there is a soul, not the other way around. And you fail so badly with the last statement because then you say like and then we see some um, magnetic or or seismic activity and and we say that's the soul 
If we say that's the soul, doesn't that mean that we believe in a soul? Christ. So, you know, they're trying to find some empirical proof of the existence of God. Nope, we're just not convinced that there is a God. You should try to empirically prove to us that there's a God. We're not trying to prove that there is a God. Also, the, 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 the most common form of atheism, though it has tons of different forms. Atheism has a bunch of different forms? What the fuck? Atheism just means, I don't believe in God. So, how many, how many forms can that take? The most common form of atheism you've probably come across, or you've heard about from your friends and peers, is the atheism that basically says, modern science, modern science, has reached a point of maturity and knowledge, and we've explored the universe far and wide, there's no God, it's all science. I'm not sure if this is another straw man, if you're misrepresenting atheism on purpose, or are you just extremely ignorant? Nobody said that science knows everything about the universe and existence. It's a, it's a self-advancing field. It's a self-correcting machine of knowledge. It's a tool. And it keeps developing and new ideas and information keep coming up and refining what we know about reality. At no point has any scientist said that they have all the answers and therefore God does not exist. Not only that, but atheism and science don't really have anything in common. Science is not the study of whether God exists or not. Science just comes here to explain how the world works. Whether God exists or not, it depends. If somehow it would be proven that there is an influence from God on nature or reality, then it would be scientifically testable, and only then will science start approaching the question of God exi God's existence. And even then, God will just be scientific. And besides, like I said, atheism and science have nothing to do with each other. The fact that the vast majority of atheists accept most of the common theories in science is simply because it's the best explanation of how the universe functions. So there's no reason to deny it. We're not... You know, we don't believe in a god, so we're looking for what really happens here. That's why so many atheists like science, admire science, and use science in their arguments. But it doesn't go the other way around. Science doesn't depend on atheism. Science has nothing to do with atheism. Atheism is just the notion that one doesn't believe in deities. It's all science. It's all scientifically pl plausible, provable. You don't need God to show the existence of the universe. We can all show it through laws and principles of science. There's only one fundamental problem with that argument. Science does not explain why. It only explains what. Why do you assert that why is a valid question to ask about the universe? Besides, it's not what, it's how. Why do you have to ask why? Why means that there is a purpose or a reason for the existence of the universe. And as far as we know, there is no reason. So nobody is asking why. Only theists will ask why because they already started with the conclusion that there is a reason for existence, that the universe is here for us, that, that God created all this because he has some kind of plan. But we're not even asserting that, so why the hell should we ask the question why? It's not a valid question. It's like if you want to know how to get somewhere and you ask somebody who, it's just a pointless question that has nothing to do with the information you're trying to gather. It does not explain why. It only explains what. It's the study of what happens when I let this bottle go. 
It's a study of what happens. It's a study of phenomena that already exist. And it's a study of the seen world. It's a study of the seen world. That's a valid way to use the question why. But in this case, science does explain why. Why is it that when you drop something, it falls to the ground? Because of gravity, which is something that, by the way, isn't really mentioned in the Quran at all. Anyway, that is a valid um, case in which you should ask why, but science also has the answer to that question.